Hey everybody, what's up? I'm Sarah the Rebel. I'm Mr. Smart. And this is Women Wrestling Friends, a podcast <laughs> burr, 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 yeah. where we talk about women and wrestling with women. Sometimes burr. they wrestle. Who are friends? <laughs> they are friends. Today's woman friend. I, I'm <laughs> <laughs> I told her I'd introduce her, and they were like, no, introduce her. Um, that's what this podcast is going to be like, full of trickery um, and shenanigans. So uh, Sharon is a fellow wrestling fan, and she is also a former NPC competitor, and we're going to ask her all about that later. Uh, but first, I should tell you what this podcast is all about. Um, we are going to be talking about Illumination Chamber, and then the lead up to Fastlane, especially because the one of the matches sounds like literal LA traffic, and that's wow. A lot of stuff. And if you notice me chewing during this, I apologize. It's very rude for a podcast, but uh, Sarah got me this lovely uh, mystery Dragon Ball candy from Japan that ended up being gum. We didn't know what it was. We didn't know. She was like, <laughs> "I'm gonna eat this chocolate." I, I was like, "I don't know what it is." I was like, "Is it chocolate?" Like, it's usually it not. Just gonna put it in my mouth and it's gum. If you've ever had Japanese candy, it's usually not chocolate. In no. fact, it's it'll be anything. It'll be like squid chews. You're like, what? <laughs> Why would anyone want? Oh, it's delicious, but I'm angry. Or like a stick puff, and you eat it, you're like, this tastes like I'm eating ramen, but candy, I don't understand. Keep um, me on your toes. Keep me on your toes, that's right. I'm a terrible friend, went to Japan and was like, I can give you one piece of candy. <laughs> this was like $5. I'm <laughs> so angry at Japan. You know, it's because of the sweet, you can't see it, but the sweet, the sweet, sweet artwork. Here, maybe we can Goku artwork. zoom it in. Zoom. See, like, look, look at that. That's zoom. just, look, it's gorgeous. Sweet, sweet, it's beautiful. So I got it for you. Thank you. That's I appreciate magic, it. Magic, magic, yeah. And I'm trying not to chew loudly. Yeah. Right. ASMR podcast. <laughs> uh, so Sharon, we want to get to know you a little bit. When did you first get into wrestling? So I am that actual lifelong fan. Mm -hmm. I can remember uh, being like three, four years old watching, uh, I'll age myself, it's fine, uh, <laughs> watching Hogan and Andre mm -hmm. on Saturday awesome. morning wrestling. And for me growing up, um, what was then like NWA slash WCW aired at the same time as then WWF, right. so I had to choose. And mm -hmm. the people just kind of called to me more in WWF, so I followed them. And of course now with the interwebs, I can follow everybody. Right. But. We truly live in a blessed time. Like, people forget that. They're like, I miss the olden days. It used to be hard. I used to have to flip back and forth between the two. <laughs> and you're like, oh, I hope I don't miss that one person. And then yeah. always on at the same time as the other people that you want to see. Always. always. Um, so who's your favorite wrestler? It's always a difficult question to you answer. Give us two. Like, but. You give different <laughs> yeah. You can be like, this is my favorite old school, this is my favorite new school. So whenever people ask me this at work, mm -hmm. because for some reason everyone's always fascinated to meet a female who likes wrestling. Yes. I don't know why. Female. That's part of why it's we like did this podcast. That's part of why we did this podcast because you act like women aren't wrestling fans. Yeah. And I'm like, have you ever looked in the crowd during shows? Right. Have you ever seen like a uh, 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 Bruno Mars? No, well, no. I was saying Bruce Mars or Beefcase because that's one of the dudes, but like any of the like, I'm a sexy dude that was Rick specifically Rick Rude. Rick Rude. Rude. Oh, you think Rick he was Rude. talking like, to anybody else? They specifically cut to the women, in the thirsty ass women in that crowd <laughs> yes. who are all about it. Girls like fanning themselves. Mm -hmm. if, if they got anywhere near the lines, ladies were grabbing that business. Like, mm -hmm. just watch some of the older things and you'll see yeah. all of the women. Been there. here the whole time. The whole time. The whole time. <laughs> I, I have a John Cena story I can tell. Oh, I'll come back to it. Um, but in terms of my favorite wrestlers, so if I had to choose one all time, mm -hmm. it would be HBK. Okay. Like in terms of the total package, the showmanship, the wrestling, everything. Right. However, the way he keeps going, AJ Styles may decent him. <laughs> 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 um, I also have a very, very soft spot for Shinsuke Nakamura. I really love him. Um, I know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my arm, I worked out yesterday and my arms are so <laughs> oh, too much, okay. too much. Um, but for women, I mean, I can never leave them out, you mm -hmm. know, it's, I've always wanted to go into wrestling, there's been a lot of fear that I would just suck, and so I, I did what a lot of people do and don't do it. Right. And of course, I admit that out loud, and I yeah. go, I should... Totally do, do it. it. <laughs> still, you can still do it. Come to San Diego Bros. Um, I don't think I haven't looked. <laughs> Come through. Um, um, I, from the current day wrestlers, I would probably say Becky Lynch is my mm -hmm. favorite. Uh, I, you know, some of it is the hair, but uh, you know, she got skill. She, she, she got is. Skill. She carried that Women's Royal Rumble. Her she exhaustion. Did. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I did get to see China wrestle back in her heyday. Oh. 
she actually wrestled uh, Road Dog, so it wasn't even a women's match. Because <laughs> back in the day, that was more likely to happen. I yeah. don't know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I have to keep her yes, up there. Yes, I know is my favorite growing up. We, we've talked about yeah. it a few times. I was like, oh, I can't be a wrestler because I'm not big like China, and I'll never be muscly like China, and I don't have titties like Sable, so it ain't for me. And then I came out here, <laughs> met a wrestler, and went to school and trained and found out not the case at all. So hopefully one day you try it out. That would be awesome. Um, so we've talked about your favorite wrestlers. Do you have like a dream match, either one that you never got to see or one that you loved and you know kind of wish you could see again? So I, there's always going to be a dream matchup Mm -hmm. that like say I could totally go for a Wrestle Kingdom 9 Nakamura versus a Heyday HBK Mm -hmm. and I think that would be so much fun. Um, awesome. However, I did get to see Kurt Angle and HBK against each mm-hmm. other in 2006. Uh-huh. They were doing a rematch of their WrestleMania match. I think it was from the year before. Uh-huh. And I could not have like enjoyed a match more. And they actually opened Raw with that match. And I remember sitting down in my seat debating on whether or not I should leave because I was done. <laughs> I, was like, I, was like, I was like, they can't do anything else tonight. We'll talk <laughs> down from here. Um, I did, however, miss seeing HBK deliver Sweet Chin Music because I had these three drunk guys in front of me with these signs. Now, I didn't know this until I got home and I watched the tape back. Uh-huh. And I was like, my man just wrestled in front of me and I missed his signature move because of these three drunk guys. <laughs> I'm so glad I didn't know that. Yeah. Uh, they would have taken me out of the arena. <laughs> yeah, that was just, just, was, just the main one in front of you. So yeah. you, see, you just can shut them out. Yeah, that's one of the things I hate about, I don't go to live shows a lot, not to live WWE shows. I, I went to a few, like, mm-hmm. okay, this is a new thing for me. Um, but I found signs to be incredibly annoying to me. Yeah. Um, and then also height is kind of a big deal if you sit on the floor. Like, if you sit on the bleachers, you're probably fine. But, like, I had amazing seats. I was two rows away from the ring. There was just one row in front of me. And I had a perfect view. And then finally, right before the show started, a six-foot-four big beefy man sat directly in front of me. And I couldn't see, I could only see the, oh, these edges of the Just right through his arms. Oh yeah, and I was just like, no! <laughs> That's when you go, listen, could you cut me a solid and, like, swap with me? <laughs> Dude, I'm like, you will totally still be able to yeah. see you. Your Put me in your lap. I will be <laughs> baby. Okay. Mm-hmm. I had the last wrestling show I went to was at the State Center yeah. in 2015. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we'll go with that. I don't know. Um, One of them. We teams. were actually way up in the top because mm-hmm. originally we thought we were going to have a big group and that's where we could find seats. And then it turned out that only like five of us Dang. went in. So yeah, we were like, <laughs> we could have sat somewhere much better. But I had this kid sitting in front of me. I don't know. He, he probably wasn't terribly tall, but he had a gigantic afro. And, and I was like, like <laughs> <laughs> um, just, just going to. Your hair is beautiful, but I can't see anything. Gosh, right now, yeah, and that's why I don't like. You never know what you're gonna like yeah. have to see through. We ended up at the like nosebleeds. Oh yeah, we, we went to Anaheim, Anaheim. and it was actually frightening because <laughs> it, 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 so it felt like you were just like. <laughs> gonna tumble over. To I thought we'd like, grab her every once in a while. Like, yeah, we're <laughs> We're going like, up the stairs like, oh my god. These kids were like climbing over the seats and playing and we kept we're just like, oh, oh we're going to die. We're going <laughs> to tumble down the stairs uh, and we're going to die. So that's when I learned I can only sit to a certain height. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. Not, and live show is not for me. I, I will make one comment about the short thing. How tall are you? I'm 5 foot 1.5. Okay, so I'm only a half inch above you, so I totally get this. Um, I my favorite thing that I used to do. I'm originally from North Carolina. I can so, tell. Yeah, I, I was gonna ask say you about that. Southern accent. What we got? I didn't know you was getting a southern gal. I'm so happy. I'm happy. Um, I used to scout tickets all the time, mm-hmm. and I was getting really, really good at it. And my best one was for a Charlotte show. Mm-hmm. Um, it was a Monday Night Raw, and I wound up getting fourth row, uh, twenty bucks under. It was fantastic. Like I was so excited. There were a couple of guys beside me, they were like the epitome of the wrestling fan, you know, they were like way too into it. (laughs) But they had made a really long woo chain so that everybody in the row could have, like somebody had a W and then everybody else had O's. And they were like, do you want to hold an O? And I was like, sure, okay. And so I'm texting all my friends because they're like, did you get in? And I'm like, yeah, I'm like over here, you should be able to see me because every time they did the thing on the jumbo screen, I could see me like just off to the side. So when we held up the signs, I said, look for the short O. Because it literally went weird. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. I am the littlest of the O's. 
Oh, man. I love when people come with something prepared for their whole seat. Hello, can I interest you? <laughs> <laughs> can I interest you in joining me? Would you help us with all the... That whole night is a story that continue. That's we'll never get to anything that. we're talking about. Uh, no, I love this. So I, I hope that this is what people listen to podcasts for. <laughs> do you just want to hear my expert opinion on elimination chamber? Or do you want to hear about the littlest boo? I think we know the answer. The littlest boo? Um, yeah. So you said earlier that you were an NPC competitor. Can you tell the folks at home what that is, first of all, and then what you competed in? So NPC stands for National Physique Committee. Mm-hmm. Um, if you ever hear uh, them referencing some of, specifically the women especially, um, about how they're like a former bodybuilder, that's usually just their blanket term for they used to compete, not in bodybuilding. Like uh, take Alexa Bliss, for example. Mm-hmm. Sometimes you'll hear them say she's a former pro bodybuilder. No, no, no. She's a pro bikini competitor. Bikini. And trust me, big difference. Mm-hmm. Um, but there are various categories for the women, and they keep adding <laughs> categories. It's getting a little crazy. But um, I did bodybuilding in 2005, six, and seven. Um, I was in the lightweight category, um, not a shock. <laughs> um, when I competed last time in 2014, I tried out women's physique, which was kind of something that they did as a replacement for women's bodybuilding. Long story, not gonna get into it. Okay. That's for another podcast. Um, <laughs> and I also tried figure for the first time. Um, if anyone is ever familiar with a fitness category, mm-hmm. Figure is like that, but without the actual routine round. So I got to wear the heels and all that stuff, which I didn't do in bodybuilding because it was barefoot. And I'm a really big shoe fan, so I thoroughly enjoyed being in the heels, you know. So I was like, I think this might be my category, actually. Which was kind of funny because when I first started, I hated figure because it was new. Mm -hmm. Like all your high maintenance girls were in it, and I was like, these are not my people but (laughs) it's changed a lot and a lot of the women that are doing figure now were kind of like me they were like maybe the lightweights that weren't quite big enough to be competitive in bodybuilding but they were too big for other categories but now that they have expanded it so much it seems like figures like a really cool happy medium and so it's you know and in terms of how I got into it It was kind of on a whim. Uh, I had followed uh, bodybuilding to some extent for a long, long time after my dad brought in a muscle and fitness magazine. You were like, this one. I was like, I'm gonna watch this. American Gladiators was on at the time. (laughs) So I would see women like Zap and I'd be like, yeah, those are all that my goals. Yeah. Yes. Every time I see a woman with like jacked shoulders and arms, I'm like, ah, oh, my arms. <laughs> <laughs> so I kind of I got intrigued, but I never really thought I could actually step on stage. And sometime while I was in college, uh, they started using fitness competitors in those magazines more often. And there was a woman who actually lives out here in California named Jenny Worth, who I started following. We were only like seven months age wise apart, same height, all that stuff. Yeah. And I was like, gotta love her. But um. I actually started dating a guy. One of the worst. Oh, mis- I, I, I already love this. Side. I already oh, love this. Yeah. One of the worst mistakes I've ever made in my life. However, I would have never gone down this bodybuilding road. That's why sometimes the him, trash so. is thrown to you. It's to make you dodge into, <laughs> into the correct path. Yes, yes. And so I wound up doing my first show because he and I had sat down and picked that show. He had like broke it up with me in the meantime. But, uh, <laughs> you were like, well, I did, um, I did all this. Work. But you know what? I have amazing friends. I have amazing family. Uh, the guy who was coaching me at the time really stuck with me as well. And so I was able to do that first show. And side note, when it comes to bodybuilding, there's qualifiers, Mm -hmm. then there's national level. And on that national level, that's where you have opportunities to turn pro. Um, So like say Alexa Bliss, she did one of those national shows, I don't remember which one. Uh, Victoria was a fitness professional as well. So, you know, you can kind of follow their path. I did a show, um, I was as a bodybuilder though, and there were no pro cards at the time, but it was the show that my ex had chosen for his first national level show. Great. And he kept saying, I'm gonna get qualified, I'm gonna get qualified. He never got qualified. Mm-hmm. And I got qualified twice. Yes! And went yes. and finished top three. Awesome. That's how you stunt. <laughs> that's how you stunt on an ex, ladies and gentlemen. Yes. <laughs> so that's my one claim to fame. That's and awesome. no, it's good. And we do joke that my entire life happened in 2007 because that's when I did my national level <laughs> shows. <laughs> So uh, if you hear me tell stories and I say back in 2007, that's... That was the 
Yeah. Peak year. year. <laughs> That's my year. Yeah. Yes. I gotta sit and think about what my year was. I think I know what it was. I think it was the year that I moved out here because mm. everything was going really well. <laughs> <laughs> Just hold on to that fame for a little while longer. I was a video game girl. Hold on. Oh my god. Oh, is that the word? Let's hold on to the knife. <laughs> hold on to the knife. <laughs> I thought it was hold on to your heart, man. I mean, I think there is a whole thing. Okay, I do know the memories line. Yes, okay. My shout out to Richard Marks and my family that actually works for a video game company, so we'll have to oh, chat after this. I won't say which one. So. Oh. <laughs> Not on the podcast, but you will tell me later. Ha ha! Uh, why did we both say ha ha? Because we, <laughs> we're the same person. Yeah. Uh, so, so what made you want to do it was seeing like the magazines and stuff, but like what went into preparing for that? Like you mentioned you had a coach. It was, it's a lot of work. Um, it looks like. Yes. <laughs> and it's, it's one of those things that when you, even if you've done it like 10 times, it still feels like the first time because your body responds differently every single time, especially females, because you know we got the random hormones to do. I just but want I, you to have babies. What are you doing? Shut up, buddy. Yeah, pretty Shut much. Up. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> trying to get buff. Yeah. Um, but a majority of my preps involved uh, going to the gym twice a day, usually mm-hmm. for cardio, because I am built like a typical woman. All my weight is from the waist down. You know, from I, every mm-hmm. I kid you not, every coach I've ever used said I look like two people. Welded together <laughs> because my upper body is built completely different from my lower. <laughs> so, are you some sort of human centaur? <laughs> are you a Frankenstein? What person? kind of person? First of all, I can't even imagine ever saying that sentence. I, <laughs> I feel like that's like weirdly that, super rude. That's something like, you go home and tell your like wife or husband, like, oh man, the girl I was working with today looked like two humans fused. Like, say it to the person. I just say it. Um, so <laughs> yeah, I, I always say that it was because I my first decade was spent in an ice skating rink, and mm. so my legs just yeah, took well, off, and my right. lower body I mean excuse me my upper body didn't get much work when I was a kid. Ice skating um, with your hands, yeah. right? And, <laughs> that actually would have been fun. Okay. <laughs> I'm terrified of getting a um, small digit chopped off yes. whenever I'm ice skating. I know it's not going to happen. Chances are so low, but it's my biggest fear. Well, and it's also so because I would the never very, want to do that. The very first time you go ice skating, you're like, if you fall, this is how you get up without getting your fingers chopped off. They literally oh, say, they that, say to that to you. Yes, oh, they literally no. said that to you. said that to me. Oh no. my god. Yeah, no, that's what no. they're like. This is how you get up. So you know, they didn't say it specifically, but like I knew what they were saying. Do you know how it's little Sarah got up? No. <laughs> little Sarah just never fell. That's how she got. She was like, if I fall, I die. And I <laughs> never. Just they put me on the ice. I never fell once as a on the ice. Well, I will. Uh, put your uh, mind at ease just a little bit. It's faded a lot, but I've got this teeny tiny little scar right here. Okay. Um, there, there was a guy who uh, he was doing like the real upper level skating and stuff, and he's a coach now back in my hometown. But uh, he actually landed an axle on my hand, so <laughs> he did not know I was in his vicinity. We and it was funny. We were not in our usual rink. They were doing repairs on it, so we were all somewhere else, and it was like this teeny tiny little space and. Yeah, he, he never saw me, and all I remember seeing was black coming at me because he was wearing solid oh, black. No. And then the next thing I remember was I was in a folded chair with like a ton of adults around me, being like, "Oh my god, oh my god!" And I'm like, "What's happening? What's going on?" Ah, no hands. And then I was that kid the rest of the day going, "Look, someone landed on my hand." <laughs> and I'd have been the kid being like, "Cool, cool, cool," taking the skates off. <laughs> <laughs> never super coming big, back. Super big guns. fear by. Um, so what? Since you know a little bit about bodies, who do you think has the best body in the WWE right now? And you can qualify best however you want. Okay. It's hard to... There's a nice body. Yeah. yeah. Um, definitely a long-term favorite has been John Cena. Mm-hmm. Um, and I know that seems like a very cliche answer. Him. Right. Sorry. <laughs> My stepson said, is John Cena actually Jesus Christ? Because you can't see either one of them. <laughs> Yes, son. Yes, he is. Good one. I appreciate you that. You have to take it off the face. This is yeah, what you have to take off the face. Yes. I was like, well, they are both JC. Okay. They're both very nice. When, when you see the footsteps in the sand, <laughs> yeah. the right John, John Cena carried you. John Cena carried you. John Cena carried you. John Cena carried you. And he, he could. I mean, yeah. there you go. And when you saw the big smoosh part of the sand, that's that right. That was when he <laughs> This is where the attitude adjustment happens. <laughs> Can we make that picture? I bet yes. we make a lot of money. Yeah, we absolutely. All right, so, no, 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 no. so, so I'm like, my brain's like going. No, yeah. Um, 
when I had his DVD, I think I got it for like Christmas or something one year, uh, and he was doing the squats in his socks and like was actually squatting, not like any of these quarter squat nonsense things. I was like, oh, hi. <laughs> um, but I have to definitely give a shout out to Finn Balor. Mm-hmm. Boys, Bill. You could just wash any yeah. clothing article on his abs. Yeah, you really Did you can. see the uh, the gif he posted of that someone made where his trunks got pulled up completely on one side? And it's just his butt cheek like popping out, and it's it's so hilarious. I mean, he reposted it. It's <laughs> 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 immediately searched yeah. it. Finn Balor is my favorite Cirque du Soleil um, person in the world. My. Uh, joke is always, I don't know if you, you're aware of Bob the Drag Queen. Oh, uh, yes. Yeah. So, he, you know, they, <laughs> first first. They have, yes, the first verse. So I always sing when Finn Balor comes out, walk up to the, the ring crotch first. Oh, crotch first. Everything, crotch he first. Does everything is, is so crotch centric. And every <laughs> guy that we've said this to has either said, oh, I've never, never known. Never. And then the next time they watch it, it'll be like, I see it now. Or they'll be like, no, no, no. 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 <laughs> because they yes. notice it too much, probably. <laughs> Well, Where is it? Like, okay, I'm gonna look for this gift later. Yeah, but so thank you, know, you for enriching my life. <laughs> this is called enrichment. Don't worry, I sent it to all my friends too. I, <laughs> he's great from here now. Um, oh, oh. I think he has fish eyes. I'm sorry. Oh, oh see, I, I love, love his eyes. They're, so they're very blue, but oh, in his gosh. soul, I feel like he. Mm, <laughs> they're very like. Wait, out. You, you didn't see the Shape of Water? That's all the rage. That's, no, I literally thought of that. I was like, maybe now the Shape of Water. I haven't seen that movie, but the description of it scares me. The of it turns it me on, me so I know that I need to go. Like, what fucking a fish man? That is literally oh, on yes. my bucket list. <laughs> I have so many plans for for merman stories. I can't wait like for it. the fanfic to come out. Oh my god, I can't. I haven't even looked to see what's there, but I you bet know, it's crazy. It's crazy. Uh, what I love most is that he was specifically made for women to find sexy. Mm-hmm. Like, I love that Guillermo was like, he needs to have this amazing butt. My wife and daughter said so. Yes. <laughs> I, I, we, I kept true. taking him home and saying, butt, is the butt good enough? Butt good enough? Is this her? Is like, Guillermo del Toro out here doing God's, God's work. work. You know, God bless Guillermo del Toro. Bless He's been you. enriching our lives <laughs> for like decades, and he just doesn't get the, the kind of props he deserves. So hopefully he gets like best director in today. I wish I could have gotten that job, though. I know. Oh, yeah, I know. Being like, the butt analyzer? Yeah. yeah. No. I've always wanted that job. I used to call He's myself a foodiologist as a young man. Booty, 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 booty. Okay, speaking of booties, <laughs> no, we're not speaking of booty. We're talking about Elimination Chamber. Bum, bum, bum. So dramatic. So this was the first women's Elimination Chamber, yeah. which seems, okay, kind of weird. I can understand Hell in a Cell to sure. an extent. I can understand some of the tougher, like tables, ladders, and chairs matches. Mm-hmm. But like, Elimination Chamber, it doesn't seem that... Rough? No, but you have to think that, especially during the Divas era, it was all about prettiness. Really? So, like, like getting in a chamber? Yeah, but, like, they're, they don't want them to, like, get, like, smooshed up against some... some, some oh, some, no, like, on the yeah, like, thing. <laughs> but also, and, and also, how many of the women who were wrestling at that point were trained enough to do it? And would have been willing to do it. Maybe like a third. I don't think they had enough people to be in the chamber. Is what I'm saying. I thought they didn't have four. Yeah. yeah, they didn't have four. Four, four plus four. two more. Yeah, they didn't, <laughs> right. They didn't it's, have enough. I think the willingness probably would have been there, but the training. You're absolutely yeah. correct. And it's funny because you look at it and they. I feel like Trish Stratus was a one-off. Yeah. They did literally, literally pick her out of a magazine, trained her, mm-hmm. and she actually turned into something. Yeah. She's an anomaly, mm-hmm. and so they turned an entire women's era based around that, and it's some of the worst. Yes, and I hesitate to call it wrestling, but I felt bad because you would see where maybe they would put someone like a Natalia or a Beth Phoenix in there with someone who clearly had only had some weekend yeah. lessons. Yeah, and not only are they trying to carry it, but you can see the nervousness of the other woman because right. she doesn't want to hurt herself, she doesn't want to hurt the other woman. Yeah. But she's probably thinking in the back of her head, okay, when is this going to be my official stepping off? To go to something you know, Yeah, to do something else. That's what Victoria said, too. She, she said something interesting um, as people were talking to her, uh, interviewing her about her time um, very recently, um, that she she said there weren't opportunities to train. Yeah. Mm-hmm. She wanted to know more. She wanted to get better, but women at that time were not given that option. Mm-hmm. And so she was having to kind of just learn as she went and teach herself everything that she could. And there, there wasn't like it is now where they really let you learn and get yeah. better. Mm-hmm. She didn't have that option. And so um, that's, and that's just from, to remind anyone who's new and doesn't listen to our podcast. Normally that is just a, a era of mm-hmm. women's wrestling. Before that era, 
women were wrestlers and mm-hmm. were trained. Yeah. Um, so. And it's you know, and I don't, I don't ever want to be like, oh, you know, you guys suck and blah blah blah. Like it's it's hard to learn how to. It is hard. It's incredibly difficult. It's incredibly difficult, and and even if you learn how to do a move, it still will take a really long time to make it look natural, or like because it's just a weird. It's. For example, at Santino Bros, the training is almost a year before uh, they will debut you. Most schools won't do that long, and you can see a difference yeah. in the students that come out of Santino Bros, and it's because it's a lot of repetition. Yeah. yeah. And so, you know, like, I, I think, you know, when I criticize a lot of the women wrestlers from that era, it's less about them and more about the structure around them. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, they can't, if, like you're saying, Victoria, like, if they didn't, if they wanted to learn more, they couldn't. Like, where could they possibly go? And so then, and it makes everybody, like, I, I've said for a long time that, like, I used to, I get very worried when I watch Nikki Bella wrestle from a particular period, in fact, because I'm like, I just think someone's going to die every time she does certain moves, because I'm like, you're not, like... She's you not know. protecting another person. Mm-hmm. That's one of my problems with Naya, but mm-hmm. that's a whole, I can go in to she's that. Better, she's but. getting better, but she's not. She should have been trained a little longer. She, she should have. She's she's very dangerous for a girl that big, and I think it's created some bad habits in the women she wrestles because they're busy protecting themselves instead of taking the move properly mm-hmm. sometimes. Anyway, we could go on and on about that, but we got a women's chamber match. It was yes. Alexa Bliss, Bailey, Mika James, Mandy Rose, Sasha Banks, and Sonya Deville. Not necessarily the squad we wanted, but it's the squad we got. Um, so I had a lot of predictions going into this. Most of them were wrong. <laughs> Um, so Bailey and Deville started. Yeah, <clears throat> which I wasn't surprised about, but also wasn't particularly expecting. Oh, we should mention that the whole theme of the Elimination Chamber, for some reason, was friendship. Yes. Uh, I love that. I love that they're meeting. Like, all right, so what's going to be like our theme? What's our overall story of the Elimination Chamber for the women? What are women like? Well, what about friendship? <laughs> friendship. Friendship. Being and each other right up. And friendship. friendship yes. yes. So everybody had a a person on their side. So like it was Alexi, Alexa and Nikki. Mm-hmm. Alexi, Alexi, that's their name. <laughs> um, uh, you know, the you had your uh, Absolution ladies, and then you had uh, Bailey and Sasha. Who, Sasha. You know, it's been, the the turn has been brewing for a minute. Yes. Like we've all been expecting it. Like it and hasn't happened it. yet. Well, we wanted to. Yes, no, we wanted to. <laughs> yeah, it's just a matter of like the timing of things. But people have been expecting it since I think at least last summer. Like, yeah, since people, Bailey came on, we've been like. Where's the time? Betray ha. Well, and I mean, you look at their matches that they had in NXT. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It was clearly working. Yes. So I'm yeah. like, why and just mess with that? Sasha just... as a heel is so much better than yes. Sasha as a face. <laughs> Way better. Um, so Bailey and Sonya started it off, and then the question was going to be, of course, is Sasha coming in next, or is Mandy Rose coming in next? If I accidentally call Mandy Rose Liv um, Morgan at any point in time, <laughs> you know why, yeah. and it's an accident. I'm mm-hmm. actually not doing it on purpose. So Mandy Rose got in, oh no, Bailey, what's going to happen? And then Sasha comes in, even the odds. Um, and so she's eventually able to eliminate Mandy, mm-hmm. and then Mick and James. Uh, I knew they were going to keep Alexa for last. Oh yeah, 100%. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, um, and I, like, oh, I should mention that I very much like Mickey's ring gear. I love Mickey's ring gear. I like mm-hmm. it when she changes it. Yeah, it is. yeah, like I was like, oh, oh, she doesn't have the giant belts. Oh, oh, I was like, is she Wonder Woman or just a gladiator, like just an Amazon? Yeah, of sorts. either way, I liked it. I was yes. into it, and I, I really root for her right now because yeah. she's older, um, <laughs> and I, I have to root for the older two. Yeah, I, like I, I but, keep saying that I would like her to get her what sixth title. It's it's something like she's one away from some sort of like record. a record, and yeah. I want her to get it before she leaves. And. I meant to look this up the other day, maybe one of you can answer this. Did Natalia ever hold the women's championship, or did she only have the divas? Maybe she only had the divas. No, no, she got the women's. Well, recently, actually. Like, yes, uh, that's right. uh, was it the fall sometime? Yeah. Yeah. I feel like Nikki deserves to be, if I am correct with this, <laughs> the, the first woman to have the women's championship and the role. Yeah, I. You know, what I would like, kind of, is um, in the in the draft post WrestleMania for Mickey to go over to SmackDown because I think they would use her better. But then I don't ever remember who's on what, so I cannot. Con- I like <laughs> me and this draft. I'm just like every time they switch it, I'm like I don't know. Where's yeah, where's that? I don't know what show anyone is on. I'm always guessing what show I'm watching because I also don't tend to watch on Monday and Tuesday mm-hmm. just because I'm busy as hell. I work from home, mm-hmm. uh, so I'm usually catching up. 
And then I have no idea what day I'm watching, yeah. so sorry. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what's happening. I feel like Mickey James is someone who, uh, there's an airplane, so sorry if you hear that in the background, but if you think I'm about to edit it out of this thing, then you don't know me very well. <laughs> um, I think Mickey is great and should be used to enhance talent, but unfortunately looks so much better than a lot of the talent that they have yeah. that it's kind of like the gold dust, um, our truth thing, where I'm like, Shoot, give them a push. They look amazing. They really do. Um, uh, man, what if they form like old people stable? Just a bunch of old people just kicking the youngest yeah. ass. That would be interesting. You're good. welcome, WWE. Yeah. Um, so Nikki James pets. came in and was like, "Get out of here, Sonya Deville." And then Bailey was like, "Get out of here, Mickey James." Uh, this was all. I'm making it sound way more boring than it is. I thought the chamber match was great. Yeah, it was. was good. I agree. Definitely. I am happy that the women have not disappointed at any of the first types of matches, you know, whether it was Money in the Bank or Royal Rumble. Mm -hmm. um, this one was no different. They, right. they went out there. They, I think every woman that's in the main roster right now is clearly aware yeah. of what they're a part of, and they're not holding back, and I love it. Um, Alexa's entrance was great because she immediately ran away like a little Koopa in a Mario <laughs> stage. She was like, bye! <laughs> um, and there was nowhere to run. No. Uh, and then... It was like had, burger time, kind of. Sorry. What? It was like burger time? Yeah, this is going up the thing <laughs> and burger <laughs> time. Yeah. yeah, that's what I heard in my head as she did it. I yeah, heard so. did it. <laughs> and then Bailey and Sasha coming from either side. There's nowhere to go. It was great. Um, and also, anytime anyone gets on top of something, like Mickey James got on top of, of the structure at some yeah. point, and all we could do was just be like, yes. Yeah. Um, I don't know why we all turn into destructive children whenever someone climbs on top of something. Destroy it. Destroy it. Destroy it. That's what a little boy said we, in front of us. We think it's Yeah, when we were at this context, so we were at that wrong, all the way in the boonies, there was this kid, probably a boy. He sounded like a little boy. Yeah. But in the way that, that sort of uh, age range where you can speak, but you kind of have an impediment. <laughs> so it's like, you know, seven, eight-ish. And so there is a thing where it was Lana and Rusev's wedding celebration that had a cake in the middle of the thing. And so when Roman Reigns comes out, this kid behind me, uh, behind us very quietly and very intensely started going, destroy it. <laughs> destroy it. We'll and, and I was oh, like, kids. Oh. Oh, I don't want to turn around because I don't want to break this beautiful spell that's happening right now. So, yes, that is the just had to die very quietly. Yeah, just quiet, like, mm, every you, time. You know what's funny? I haven't had many kids sit around me mm -hmm. any time I've gone. And the one Lucky. time I did was the very first show I ever attended, mm -hmm. which was the 99 King of Rain. Yeah. Uh -huh. That kid's an adult now. That, yes. <laughs> that child had a sign that he would hold up. Talk about changes in era. Mm -hmm. <laughs> His sign said, China has balls. <laughs> What a fucking piece of shit. And of course, I'm looking down in front of me, <laughs> yeah. and then I'm looking over at the dad thinking, you let him make this sign. Yeah. <laughs> the dad probably made the sign for him. It's it's so not, smack it. Just smack everyone. What if it was in the air and just <laughs> ripped it? Started ripping it down the middle in his <laughs> hands. <laughs> uh, shoot, that sign would be confiscated now. Yeah, yeah absolutely. <laughs> Man. On the 90s retreat. I remember, right? like, so many of my friends were like, you like China? She looks like a man. I don't give a fuck what she, Why do men always think that I give a fuck what's fuckable to you? You are so fucking <laughs> <Yeah>. to me. <laughs> also, I'm sorry, but she really doesn't. I mean, I don't know what kind of dudes you've seen, but like, they don't pretty like ass that. dudes. Pretty, pretty, also, a muscly dude. A muscly, extremely The topic fit. of men and muscular women oh, is, because yeah. trust me, the messages I have gotten over the years when I've competed, even now, fortunately, I don't get them as often, but... Back in the MySpace days, man, yeah. I used to get some messages and I'm like, what's wrong with you people? People are so like, weird. I don't understand. Then, I literally don't look like a dude. I'm yeah. sorry. It yeah. made it, so, like, when they gave China the storyline of Eddie Guerrero, that was so important to me mm -hmm. as a young woman because I had constantly had to hear that she's unattractive. It's like, no, she's not. Look mm -hmm. at that. Look at that love. And then he betrayed her. But it was okay. It was and good. every time I see the two of them, I know we're just getting off topic it because it's fine. Yeah. It's fine. Um, <laughs> I, I got so I got to see the two of them mm -hmm. uh, in that same era, and I had a friend with me. She'd never been to wrestling. She was so excited. She was a huge fan of The Rock, so she was like, "Oh my god, yeah, let's go!" So we did my scalping thing. We got some really good lower level seats, and I know <laughs> Eddie Guerrero and China come out, and of course he keeps saying, "Mama see, Mama see." And she looks at me, yeah. and she and to give you a little bit of background on her, she was like that very wide eyed, naive. Oh my god, everything's amazing. Mm -hmm. So she looks over at me, and she goes. 
Mamacita? That means little mama in Spanish. And then she looks back at the ring again, and she turns around and looks back at me, and she goes, that's not Mamacita, that's Mama Grande. <laughs> so every time I see oh, China, no. she's my Mama Grande. <laughs> It's a dirty ass carpet, but still, it's oh, carpet. Yeah. The carpet. Uh, there was a Lion King spot in the yeah, elimination chamber. <laughs> Sasha, sister, help me. <laughs> Long live the queen. <laughs> and then she kicked her down, and everyone cheered, I think, even though we loved yeah. Bailey. <laughs> oh, yeah. People, people were very into that moment. And um, I love it when the commentary team acts shocked. Oh, yes. Except for Corey, who's like, I told you, I told you this whole yeah. time, it's just about ego. It's like, shut up, Corey. Shut up, Corey, nobody asked you. Nobody asked you. It's your stupid hair. It was moments like that that I missed with TV and on. Oh, I know. Commentary. I, as much as we pick on him, he does. I love him, I, I do love him still. Yeah. There are certain moments when he comes through and you hear him just, what? what? <laughs> <laughs> Though, you know, it's weird because I didn't think I, I missed Coach, but I kind of missed Coach. Now that he was, like, back on, I was like, oh. I kept being like, who is Coach? Did I miss this era? This, yeah, this is like... He looks familiar, but I just, like, the name Coach is not ringing a bell for me either. I'm trying to remember the exact years. It's like... So I can tell you some of his work with The Rock Yeah, is some of the funniest stuff it, yeah. you'll see. It's so yeah. I'll look it up later. No, <laughs> yeah, it's like, that, like, like early 2000s. There were like like most people, I had a period of time where I yeah. fell off from wrestling and for it's, a little bit. Most women I talked to, it's during the Divas era. Yeah, for me, I miss that shit because yeah. I was like, this I, looks stupid. I'm yeah. not gonna lie, if there weren't good looking guys, I probably would have stopped watching. Jerry. <laughs> You're lucky that if there's so many handsome men yeah. to keep me watching, <laughs> you jerks. Yeah, I was on that Rock John Cena back when he had the uh, the wigger persona, uh, which I. Damn it! Really enjoyed about him. I'm just so happy well, you put you this that word. <laughs> well, he put this so spinner long. on the, the thing. Oh, I was like, this is yes. so garbage. This is peak, I love it. This but it was, it was fantastic. It was fantastic. It worked. And didn't even change it after he gave it up. <laughs> yeah, he didn't have it for like a year. They still had that damn spinner <laughs> on it, and I, it was the funniest thing to me because then you had to have like Triple H sitting there with a spinner. On it. it was just the greatest. It enhanced him though. It did. Um, so Anyways, Bailey got her revenge yes. with a, a belly to belly. Um, Bailey, Bailey to Belly, whatever she calls it, <laughs> weak looking shit. Sorry, I don't mean to be so mean. I just hate, hate it as a finisher. But what if it's off the second row? It doesn't matter. It doesn't look like a finisher. It looks like a hug. <laughs> it looks like a long hug. And I know it's that's what you wanted. <laughs> uh, Alexis stole the pin, because that's who she is. Yeah. Um, she hit her Twisted Bliss off the top of one of the pods. Do we call those pods? Because I really like that word. That's adorable. That's what we're calling them now. Yeah. Um, and it gets countered into a bank statement. I didn't love the uh, the transition there. This is a wrestler thing. But like the transition from her move into the bank statement, it didn't look super clear. It looked very safe, mm-hmm. which is good. But as a result, I felt right. like you kind of lost the, aha, I have caught this well, in I think some way. Since that counter happened outside of the ring, there, mm-hmm. she's probably trying not to be like, let me not grind your body into Probably. The metal railing here. Even um, though it had a very thick padding. Well, and there was also something awkward because I was like, that nothing can be done out here. Yes. Why is this happening out here? Yeah. And then they did get under the ring. Yeah. So even part of me was even wondering, was that supposed to happen? There? I think it was. Or like, <laughs> I think it was because it's that thing of anytime. So I, I figured Alexa was going to hold. So when, whenever there's a thing where it's like, oh, someone might lose it, there's always a weird stipulation where mm-hmm. someone does something in a way that will not win them the title. So in that moment, they technically win, that but they sense. do not end up yeah. winning the match. So that's kind of, you know, from a story what? perspective, that's probably yeah. It on. just looked, it didn't look clean to me. It looked weird. And it was a moment that kind of took away from this moment because I was like, what? Mm-hmm. I also didn't like the camera angle on it. So I don't know if that had more to do with it or it's been a lot yeah. of that. Yeah. I don't know what's been going on with Rob, but every once in a while I'll be like, what the fuck are you looking at? Like, I just right. don't know no. where... Yeah, Co- uh, Tyler actually said that while we were watching one of the things. He said, oh yeah, good, you want to cut away from the person doing the thing. Yeah, <laughs> I think miss, they straight up missed a finisher at a lot of the matches. Something, yeah, yeah something weird like, like that happened like... where they like turned and looked at someone's face while something really important was happening. <laughs> and they had to immediately go to replay. Right. <laughs> because, like, I, I'm sure... Sh- Somebody fucked up, so nobody saw this thing. So we're just gonna talk about it again. And Corey was looking like a ventriloquist dummy come to life. He looks a little bit too bit. like a treasure <laughs> troll. Um, so Alexa won, and then gave this promo that some people really liked. I didn't like it. 
It was where she's like, oh, I'm quoting Sasha essentially by saying, this is for all the little girls and blah, blah, blah. Just kidding. This is for the women. None of your dreams would ever come true. I liked that none of your dreams would ever come true. I felt like the first part went maybe too long. Yes. Because we're all, we all know. Yeah, we know your Lexa does not feel this way. Yeah. So it was just kind of weird. Like it went on from what felt like way too long. <laughs> and then she did her real good promo. Mm-hmm. And it was like, okay, but thanks for giving me a shitty promo before your good promo. I actually thought they were initially giving her an opportunity I, to be to genuine. Be yeah. And so then when she turned it, I was like, oh, that was That's a JK. Okay. Yeah. okay. Maybe I'm too cynical. I was like, shut up. (laughs) Shut up, Alexa. Shut up. This isn't what you feel. (laughs) I know you in your heart. It's dark. Not as dark like mine. Destroy it. Destroy it. Oh, man. Destroy it. So let's go very quickly through the other matches because we did spend a lot of time. Titus Worldwide uh, and the bar had a match. The bar won. But yeah, I enjoyed it. Yeah. I, I was gonna say I felt like I was kind of a high mess, uh, <laughs> but uh, here's why. I I think everyone involved is a spectacular wrestler. Mm-hmm. Like Cesaro could run that company. Like he yeah, is crazy. such an amazing athlete. I would also put him on the body list, by the way. Yeah. Um, the pepperoni nipples. But you, <laughs> sorry, I like him a lot. But you well can like. tell <laughs> that they're shielding Sheamus from continuing neck injuries, and. Mm. Cesaro, I mean, he's just so banged up right now because he has been having to carry the weight. Right. And I I would be so floored if they didn't drop the title at WrestleMania. I, I don't know. I, I halfway yeah. expected them to do it here because it pains me to watch them wrestle right now because they look like they're yeah, in that a is serious true. They need I, I did assume that everything going wrong was Titus's fault, but now that you say that, <laughs> I guess you're right. Because I don't think Titus, to me, has never been a strong wrestler. I like him as a manager. I think he's got a great weird energy. Mm-hmm. Um, but as a wrestler, to me, he's not my favorite to watch. So I just assume the bumpy spots were him. But now that you've said this, I am realizing you're right, that was a lot of protection. And also, yeah, I mean, you can't really hit Cesaro in the face because his teeth are still like yeah, because he's got the braces going on right now. Um, like they're they're beat up, they're real beat up right now. And you can also t- there was something I can't remember what it was, but there was some move that Cesaro was supposed to take where he he dodged that a lot, like a little earlier than I think he normally would have. Mm-hmm. And I was like, he was just like, no, sir, I don't want it. <laughs> no. Uh, I feel like this that. is a match then in that case where you could have used Dana Brooke a bunch and. They're letting I her really be cute. do something with Right, her. but like, let her interfere. Let her do some stuff. I think the only reason that she's not interfering is they're supposed to be faces. And so <laughs> interference is not a face move. But, but even think... with a face team, you can have a manager who tries interfering, it's like, always pays for it. Right. Or who is not a face and is a heel. Yeah. Uh, and so... then it has to be like, the ties have to be right. separate at some point. Yeah, I just, I think, and like, especially because Dana Brooke is strong AF. She's like super. She she's can do all kinds of stuff. Whose body I really like. Yeah, she's great. And she like, is an IFBB fitness pro. So. Yeah, really. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes <laughs> every sense. time I see her arms, I'm like, ooh, corn fed. Look at you. Yeah. <laughs> I want it. Yeah, her whole like her whole business. She comes out and flexes and does her stuff. I'm like, yeah, get it. Get Pop it. the buttons off of that. And she's had a really rough last year. Yeah. I, so I just every time I see her, I'm just like, oh, yeah, do something with her. Or like electric gladiator kind of. You know, so I can't remember if it was the pay per view this week but they were nice shoes anyway she um, wore them twice actually yeah. so, oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah she was like actually she's won those three point yeah, okay. <laughs> she's like I know because I have a clock in the <laughs> uh, but yeah I kept expecting Dana to run up and do something like you know point out to, point out to the mother or run up like shield you know somebody from getting hurt do something um, but yeah I feel like I don't know if it'll be the tightest worldwide it probably is going to be Balor Club if they're going to draw but it who might, is another underutilized so, uh, people? Yeah, so it might be a thing where Titus Worldwide wins it, and then they then Ballot Club gets it from them. I don't. I know that's going to be the end point. I just don't know how long it's going to take for them to get it. So we got to kind of go. Yes, yeah, sorry. Except we go quick and we not bad at it. Uh, Nia ones. versus Asuka. I didn't want to see this match because I don't think Nia is on Asuka's level, and I think it hurts both of them to have them face each other so soon. I like personally, uh, I wasn't that big on it. After the match, Jax attacked Asuka and put her through the barricade. That part was fun. Yes, yeah, it was. Yeah. <laughs> Which is why I think I, I like the whole, like, like the thing and the stuff, and the stretching it out and doing all the thing, and then ending with, yeah, some kind of major oh shit moments. It was kind of solid. Yeah, I just didn't, I didn't like the way Asuka won either. Like, it, it just seemed like 
kind of a cop out like uh, oh she's done all this stuff and she's taken all these moves and then I'm just gonna get her with a roll up I always hate when that happens mm -hmm. unless it's a really good surprise which right. to me this mm -hmm. one wasn't um, so yeah I didn't really enjoy it and I don't think it really helps either of them yet to face each other unless something really weird happens that disqualifies the match or throws mm -hmm. it out or someone interferes like that's just me, I'm old school. Uh, Matt Hardy and Bray Wyatt, Hardy broke Bray. Um, Ronda Rousey signed a contract and put Triple H through a table. Okay, so this is the, the, that's not important. What's important was, her <laughs> angle was out there like, yeah, and you said your mama was a hoe. Like, you <laughs> she was. Was. I love the her angle moments. Yeah, there was that so totally good. made the segment. Because yeah. I thought the segment was going to be way worse. Yeah. Way, way worse. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you know, no, no, nothing. I don't want to see. You know, it's just, you know, she called you a hoe. Yeah, yeah. Just, I don't know if you know that. <laughs> he said your mom was a hoe, too. Oh, like, right. As he's walking out, he's like, way on the way out. I don't, I, and also, your grandmama. Yeah. She's <laughs> talking about the grandmama. Um, yes, Kurt Angle being like, mm, 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 no, I just heard. I just heard. I mean, I didn't. I'm just saying. This is this, this is the thing I heard because he, he, you know, he was in my office and he said a thing. I'm just saying. To me, though, the story is so awkward because why would the general manager, who could very easily be fired and who wanted the job enough to try not to get fired, yeah. say all this stuff yeah. in front of Triple H and Stephanie? That seemed just like story-wise. I like a little bit of sense, and that made no not a bit of sense to I'm, me. Oh, I'm assuming it's going to be an angle Triple H WrestleMania thing. Yes, I, I definitely That's... think so. But the like, why wouldn't you fire him? You threatened to fire him for way smaller shit than that. Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. you know, almost costing you Ronda Rousey. Mm -hmm. I don't know. That was weird. To yeah. Me. yeah. And then uh, Rousey's facial expressions, bless her heart, the whole time. The best, the, the best, her best acting was when after she got slapped, and that look on her face. That was the she best. Probably part. wasn't acting. I know. I've got to gotta be honest. I feel bad for. Her. Dude, she's because I feel like they've just shoved her out there, yeah. and they're like, "Oh, you'll be fine." And yeah, and she's not. Good yeah, and she trained uh, with at the dojo a few times. Her and some other awesome ladies. So like, she she's learned this, but the actual being out there in front of people, remembering that you're no longer a wrestling fan or a wrestling guest, mm -hmm. you are now talent. I think that's where she's struggling because you you she's breaking kayfabe every yeah. few seconds, or she's not sure what her kayfabe should be. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if that's them not telling her because she's such a big deal that they're like Cutting not comfortable telling her like, all right, this or if she's not comfortable saying, can you give me some guidance about mm -hmm. what should I be doing? What am I thinking right now? You know, she uh, needs some sort of a punk esque moment where she just cuts a promo and is like, this is the Ronda Rousey you're getting in WWE. Forget everything else you've seen before. But we haven't seen that yeah. yet. Instead, we're just going to throw you in the ring. Oh yeah, and we're going to put you in WrestleMania. By the way, right? Exactly. <laughs> we're going to throw you in the ring during a pay per view for you to speak for the first. You know time. what else was shitty? Mm. So all the women wrestlers were like, "This is some bullshit," kind of throwing shade about Ronda and the Royal Rumble. But mm. then they were all forced to make those little statements. About well, yeah, she's one of the top women, and where she came from, yeah, it was almost like punishment. It seemed like in a way, like oh yeah, you gonna talk shit? You're gonna be in the video telling everybody why you're afraid of Ronda Rousey. Oh, fuck, I hate you. <laughs> All right, she's very good at what she did, so you gotta be cautious. She is very skilled. She and is a she skilled will. warrior, and she will be great in. That's like props to Triple H for. Yes. Oh yeah, I know. That was I love it. His his mouth got bloody. I don't know what happened. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe his own hand hit himself. Yeah, no, maybe. Sometimes shit like that yeah. will happen. But he yeah, he 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 assisted in that that judo flip like a champ. Did, did he bite his own tongue? We'll never yeah, know. I don't know. We'll never know. Uh, but I want y'all to know, as someone who understands what wrestling is and you know trained. That slap was real. It was, yeah, 100% real slap. slap. Yeah. Sometimes y'all forget <laughs> how yeah. wrestling works. And I also feel like, you know, from a Ronda perspective, getting slapped in the face is literally not. Yeah, true. she's fine. Slap me. She probably even said that. No, go No, no, no. 100% slap me. <laughs> and you can tell because of the way her face was her red. Her face was red afterwards, yeah. too, yeah. Um, so then the men's elimination chamber happened afterwards. Um, it was Elias, John Cena, Roman Reigns, Seth Rollins, The Miz, Ron Strowman, Finn Balor. Let me tell you my favorite part of this. The commentary team kept forgetting how many people were in this match <laughs> and saying the wrong numbers. They right. said it like three times. All three God, of these men. Really? All six of these men. No, count. Count again. <laughs> You're wrong. <laughs> so many times. Um, this was a lot. 
Yeah, I just, I, I like Braun, but I also, I'm very tired of the way they book every match, which is basically just him destroying everybody. You know? I just, which I, you know, I like it, but also I'm like, I just, I need you to go somewhere with it. Yeah, so just, you're not doing. I'm fine with him kicking everybody's ass. Yes. That's what he does. Of course. I mean, that's, <laughs> that's the thing, it's just. I'm, I'm, I've been over Roman for so long, and Joy as soon as he won, I was like. <sighs> yeah, having him win was so weird. But I'm not going to be little Nancy negative about every single thing that they do and I'm like this is a no baby we're talking about there's no telling what's going to change between now and Wrestlemania they might add five people again I mean again. it's <laughs> there's we may not actually have a one-on-one -on -one match that nobody right. wants to see I, I don't know and his, his promo the night after was very good mm -hmm. um, but he's done that before where he's given a good promo and then gets pulled real back in to whatever they, the season yeah, they it's, want. It's, it's like mismanagement, I think, on him for the most part because, you know, he, I, you know, the spear is like a really kind of simple move. Like, it's a simple move, but when people look good doing it, it looks like it hurts a lot. Mm -hmm. And so he's one of the people who I think has a good spear that he delivers. And he's very pretty. And I talked about this before that I like him and his face in various other regions. So yes. I don't I don't have the problem that everybody else has with him, but that's also because I recognize that they're mismanaging his character. Yes. And that this is a this is a this is a writing like behind the scenes right. issue. We've seen moments where yes. Roman comes yeah. through. Like the yes. cake thing. Mm -hmm. Like the that whole cake like we were talking about the way that him. was one of his better things because he was just talking Cena. Yep. And then this promo, you know, that happened this week. He's just he has something there and it's not what the direction that they want and yeah. so they keep smothering it over and over again. I feel like his steez really is like, I'm just a normal dude who will get up and smack the crap out of you. And that should be his thing, you know what I mean? Yeah. Because that's usually when it works the best and they just never want him to do that because he looks like this big scary dude but he also he smiles and he's extremely pretty and oh, charming. No. So oh, like, no. He is a very attractive man. Yes. I have always liked it. From the moment that The Shield came out, mm -hmm. I remember some of my little wrestling Twitter people that I go back and forth with, there was this one female in particular just thought Dean Ambrose was the hottest thing. Ah! I was like... Well, you know her type. He's then. the third. In the yeah. Group. What are you talking about? Clearly the but ugliest. My favorite Roman is the Roman that doesn't speak. Yeah. <laughs> like, it just comes out, does, leaves. And yeah. I'm like, that works for him. Yeah. <laughs> He's, he, don't give him a mic. Just, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, so, Braun kind of destroyed everybody in this. Got The Miz, got Elias, got Cena, mm -hmm. uh, got, got everybody, right? Mm -hmm. I think he eliminated everyone. Um, much, which yeah. is a way to make him really strong. Uh, the Miz had his own terrified Alexa moment. <laughs> I was really happy that commentary team called that out and yeah. said like Alexa earlier because sometimes they like to pretend. Yes, mm -hmm. it's not the same. Thing. But it's not the same thing. But, but they didn't. Is. Do you guys love the Miz as much as I do? I love hating the Miz. <laughs> <laughs> he's the worst, and I appreciate it. Yes, yeah. I appreciate that he's a good heel, able to make me despise him. And I also am like happy that he's like realizing his dream because I remember him from yes. the real world. Like, Same. He's to be a wrestler, yes. and now he actually is, and he's very popular, and mm -hmm. he's fucking terrible. Like, like you know, like in, in that sort of we hate you, you're a villain sort of way. His his right. promo ability has gotten so, so yeah. good over the years, and so every time he speaks now, I'm it, I'm just like beaming because I'm so proud. Yeah. So I've seen him grow, but. I, I'm with you. Like I, re I remember watching him on The Real World back in the day, and, and so when he was world champ and he would have some of these matches with some of the people like your Mick Foley's and Roxanne, yeah. it was like you could literally see him marking out in his yeah. head. And I just, exactly. I don't know, like yeah. there's something yeah. about my, my heart just like jumped and I went, that would be me. Yeah. <laughs> and I feel like he like volunteers to take legends finishers. Like mm -hmm. I, I think like him and like... It's not just him, The New Day does it too. The New Day does it too. A lot of the newer guys you can see. I don't think anyone's taken more than those two, though. Like, I'm trying to think. I think there's a great compilation video yeah. out there of people of the younger guys taking mm -hmm. finishers, and you can see them literally <laughs> over <laughs> <laughs> All of them is the like, yes, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm taking a stutter. Yeah. Um, so Braun eliminated everyone, then got eliminated by Roman, mm -hmm. uh, and then attacked Roman after the match. As you do, as you do with yeah. your bigot. Mm -hmm. um, it's just, I, I, we saw Braun and Roman, and it had some awesome moments, and um, Lord, it's because we, I, I think the, the biggest problem is that we are in the literal same cycle of matches slash story that we've been in since, like, the last WrestleMania, mm -hmm. and it's tiresome. It's extremely tiresome. I'm really tired of Brock Lesnar always showing up once a month. 
I'm really tired of get that belt off of him. Just get it off of him. What are you even doing? Like, why is it? I don't care if you give it to Sami Zayn or somebody wild. I don't care. And <laughs> also, they should have a Universal Women's Championship. Mm. And you should give that to Asuka, and Asuka can then destroy people on both. They Oscars. should also have women tag. Yes, they Thank you. Yes, 100%. you read my mind. Because there's a bunch of women just not, you're not doing anything they with them. They throw so. every one of them, I can't remember whether it's SmackDown or Raw, they handle it by throwing all of the women into each match. Yes, so all mm -hmm. of them. Now we've got a reason. But I still don't want to get up into how mad I am about how useless Absolution is. Yeah. It just or, and the other one, Absolution and the Riot Squad. Yeah. You, you come in, we're so strong, we're gonna beat everyone up. We don't win nothing though. No. Nope. Uh, also, you don't know who any of us are. Also, we don't fit together. Like, oh, yeah. why are you this white? Okay, sorry, that was my <laughs> anger. So fast, we're gonna talk real, real quick because this yes. episode got real long. Yeah. Uh, it's the Rude Boy versus Orton, who is also a Rude Boy. It's Usos versus New Day. <laughs> it's Charlotte versus Ruby Riot. Lord Jesus, take the wheel. Um, <laughs> and then we have the true traffic stop of everything: AJ versus Kevin Owens versus Sami Zayn versus Corbin Dallas Multipass versus <laughs> Dolph Ziggler versus John Cena. Um, I'm gonna assume that no titles change hands. At I just don't see it. I, I don't see it happening. I feel like as close as we are to WrestleMania, it'd be silly. Yeah. Because none of it would make sense. Exactly. Uh, unless they're going to pull one of those, oh, it'll just change hands again on SmackDown the following Tuesday, right. which is just as silly. But... I could see the New Day maybe getting it so they would have their rematch at WrestleMania because that would be a big deal. And they didn't get a chance to main card last year, so this would mm -hmm. be a nice... Kind of bump up and God bless the Usos. I hope they do actually make the main card of WrestleMania yes. this year. That is 100%. ridiculous that yeah. they've been champion as many times and as long as they have, and yeah. they've never been on a main card. Yeah. I don't get it. I don't understand it. But I don't, I don't get that. so my fiance's biggest pet peeve is any time there is a championship bout, especially a world title, mm -hmm. on the line. He hates it when it's more than one on one. Yes. Yeah. Now, I'm. I'm with him to some extent. Like, I don't care. You can make it a triple threat or whatever, but don't do it every pay-per-view. That's where yeah. we are right now. It's just that it, we can't seem to get a one-on-one -on -one matchup because I keep waiting for them to mess up right. my rematch from Wrestle Kingdom 10. I, I want my AJ Styles and my Nakamura one-on-one okay. -on -one at WrestleMania. That could headline WrestleMania. It could. Yeah, and it won't. And I keep waiting to see, all right, who else are you going to throw in there? Are you going to put a Sami Zayn... Kevin right. Owens. It's, it's you know, almost I, like they don't, like they they feel like they don't trust any one person to be strong enough to carry something right now. Or they don't have anything else for anybody else to do, so they just shove them all into one place. Remember that holding mm -hmm. pattern we were in? Was it last year where they kept they kept doing something, and we were like, "Why are you doing this?" And then finally, it had a really big payoff. I can't remember what it was. But like it's got me wondering if this is I guess this is some sort of holding pattern for something. Right. But it's Maybe. getting this is ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Yes. Also, and Baron Corbin, just sit the fuck get down. Get out I'm of sorry, here. just get out of here. You've had enough. <laughs> just go. You're done. Go. You don't work. You and Dolph can go have your kick kickoff show matches every damn day. Well, and you know what? I like Dolph Ziggler. I did too. They I, just haven't done anything with him. And why would you have him get the belt and then just leave it in the middle of the ring and leave for a month and then come back? Why would you do that? And, and by the way, don't say anything. Not say right. It, it wasn't. <laughs> he didn't try to come reclaim it or no, anything. He just, like, he just showed up like, ha ha! I'm in the wrong hole. You're like, what the fuck? Yeah, huh? It's <laughs> so weird, and it made no sense, and no one cared. Nope. No one was like, oh, I hope Dolph Ziggler shows up for the. Nobody cared. Was... I assumed he was off shooting a movie and would come back for another one. That's what I assume. Because usually when someone just like disappears under mysterious circumstances, right. you, you see a trailer like three months later. Uh, from you know WWE pictures, you know, like, um, so that's why I assume was happening. But I had seen some rumors about you know his contract coming up and all this stuff. But then there were a lot of people that were saying he wasn't going to renew and that he was going to test the waters in Japan. And I was like, please do, do because that there, would though. be fantastic. But yeah. no, it's so weird to do nothing. Um, but yeah, AJ's winning. I just don't think. You think yeah. I don't think it's changing hands because I think the most interesting match you could have for SmackDown in the rest in WrestleMania is Shinsuke and AJ. Mm -hmm. Yes. And I won't sit. I won't we sit. Give the people what give they want. Give us what we want. Please. 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 <laughs> this is the last time. time. <laughs> um, all right. So is there anywhere you would like people to go follow you online? Or if you don't want that, then you can just say bye. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> you can always follow me online. Um, my uh, name for both uh, Twitter and uh, Instagram is Jim Diva. Uh, that has been my nickname for the past 
gosh, I hate to say it, 15 years now. So oh, Brandy. Lock it down, lock it down. If there is a social media, you can probably find me as Jim Diva. The only exception is Snapchat. It's the underscore Jim Diva. Oh, but with all the changes they've done to Snapchat, I really don't care. So it's, yeah. you can yeah. follow me, but I probably won't post. It's true. I ain't been on Snapchat in a minute. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, if I wasn't interested in WWE, I'd give you one in premium accounts, show y'all my boobs. But anyway, it's another story. i got to make rent somehow this month. Tetas. Uh, <laughs> Let me in on this secret. Okay. <laughs> I'll tell you about it. I just did some research last night. Uh, I'm Sarah the Rebel everywhere on Twitter, on Instagram, at your mama's house, on Twitch, anywhere you want to go, you can find me at Sarah the Rebel. I'm at Mrs. Tamara on your tweets and your Instagrams. And you can find Women Wrestling Friends only on Twitter, Women Wrestling F. We are on Instagram, which is a good place to go find our link if you need it, but we are locked out of that account because we forgot the password 12 years ago. All right, guys, we will see you next time. Bye-bye. Hey,